Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. While South Africa is reassessing its energy plans, some large-scale commitments have been made over the last few weeks. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss some of the announcements. Terence, welcome to Second Take. Sassel unveiled something called Project 2050. What does this entail? Uh, Sassel is a big uh, petrochemical company, a big producer of our liquid fuels in South Africa. And they've been under some criticism, notably from the South African Communist Party recently, that they're in a disinvestment mode, that they're leaving South Africa behind. They have got massive projects plans f uh, planned for the U.S., about $20 billion potentially between 2014 and 2021 that they could be investing there. And they're looking at an ethane cracker initially and then a gas to liquids plant in the U.S. And this has sparked a bit of a criticism saying, you know, this is supposed to be home base. You aren't really investing at the level that you should be. So Sassel CEO David Constable this week announced that they are looking seriously at some big investments into South Africa and Southern Africa. And they look at uh, Project 2050. And that's really about sustaining their facilities, their coal to liquids, their gas to liquids, their Mozambique uh, gas imports until uh, that the middle of the century and beyond. And so they're looking at the feedstock that's going to be necessary to do that. They're going to require coal and more gas that's going to need to come into the system. There is, as we know, a lot of gas in Mozambique, but uh, that needs to be firmed up. There will be a mixture, it seems, of coal and gas that will sustain those uh, facilities. And he indica indicated that over the, that period of that investment, that there's going to be actually more uh, uh, money invested in South Africa, more capital invested in South Africa than what they're looking at in the U.S. So it's, it's an interesting announcement. The timing, I suppose, was maybe put, pushed forward because of the criticism and the details aren't really there. But we know that there's this massive installed base and if you have to sustain this investment for that sort of period of time, it's going to take uh, a lot of money. Cabinet Lakhotla also recently made an announcement about another third large-scale coal plant. What is this about? So the project's known as Coal 3 and it's been around for a number of years now, but we haven't got the details at all as to what uh, this project will entail, where it will be. And uh, it also comes at a time when we're still reflecting on what we should do in terms of the uh, energy mix going into the future. So it came, it seems, as a bit of a surprise to everyone that Cabinet endorsed Coal 3 because we're also looking at the big nuclear plants. Uh, we're looking at possible integration of more gas into the system, both natural or conventional gas from Mozambique or on the, or on the west coast, as well as maybe uh, frac gas. But it seems that the uh, a line was put down, a marker was put down that, uh, by Eskom that they need to start planning beyond Kusile, uh, Mudupe and Angula, which are currently being built, and looking to the future, especially because of the current fleet in Mpumalanga is getting to an age where they have to start thinking about either life extension or decommissioning. So the announcement was made. I must say the message from uh, Public Enterprises Minister Malusi Gigaba around the project was a little bit l less uh, uh, clear than wh what was announced by Trade and Industry Rob Davies straight after the Lakotla. He was saying you know, the, that it, it might not be as urgent to press ahead with Coal 3, particularly because there are a number of private uh, power projects that could come into the, the mix over the next few years. But it seems that at least Eskom is welcoming the fact that they've got some certainty and they can start now planning where the project's going to be, what technology solutions are going to be employed, uh, what contracting model is going to be employed. is going to be very interesting to see because we've had the, the Madupi and Kusile problems. And um, it's really been quite difficult for Eskom to navigate. A lot of it could be put down to the fact that those decisions were made so late and they had to contract at, a, at the worst time possible and without the plans really being in place. But on the other hand, should we go for such massive scale power stations, especially given that the demand outlook is now very unclear, or should we be looking at more incremental type projects? Should we go with the, the contractors that haven't really delivered at Madupi and Kusili to the standard that was expected initially? Uh, should a different solution be employed? So <laughs> there's a lot of questions and Eskim's not giving the answers yet. All they say is that they know that there is enough coal probably in the Waterberg. All these commitments have been made while South Africa is still weighing up its, its energy options from liquid fuels to fracking to nuclear. Yeah, that's right. We're doing these, <coughs> these reassessments of our plans <coughs> and uh, we're right in the middle of that process. And uh, that's why in some ways the Coal 3 announcement took people off, by, off guard because um, we're looking at 
really a range of options. We're looking at what is the demand trajectory because the current integrated resource plan 2010 really has a very different uh, demand outlook to what is we are currently experienced, experiencing in South Africa with the low growth and the low, well, actually negative uh, rise in consumption from electricity perspective. So <coughs> the, we're doing a whole lot of things at the moment, and there are a lot of balls in the air. There's the nuclear decision, which we've pr been promised is going to be made this year, whether positive or negative. There seems to still be a commitment to nuclear, but how that fits in with coal three, uh, what that means in terms of timing, how it fits in with the seems the pressure from the ANC Lakotla, as well as the cabinet Lakotla, to move ahead with fracking in a more a decisive way. It also is not clear how it fits in with the demand or the clamour for more natural gas in the system, which can be brought on more incrementally, is also far from certain. So I think there are a lot of thing decisions that need to be made. We also have an independent power producer baseload program, which seems to be, you know, getting into a more serious phase now. With a, you know, there's tenders out for transaction advisors and project managers to advise government on how that procurement process will un unfold. And that's now, uh, that is likely to you know, take the form of what we've seen with the renewable energy program, but some sort of competitive bidding process. Uh, so we've got a lot of uh, uh, potential projects. Uh, we've got a lot of um, po possibly competing agendas in terms of say a big base, low coal, big nuclear. And I think that we're going to have to make as a country some big decisions in the not too distant future so that we have real certainty both for what Eskom is going to be doing and what the private sector needs to do. Terence, thank you very much. That is the Second Take Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.